a smooth, consistent, and powerful swing. In pursuit of such a swing, adults pay small fortunes to coaches and trainers every day. That's part of what makes the subject of our next story so amazing. You see, five-year-old Kyle LaGrasso has a swing to die for, even though he never paid a dime to learn it. But as Frank DeFord reports, that's only part of this young prodigy's remarkable tale. Slow down. By the looks of it, Kyle LaGrasso is your typical five-year-old boy. The youngest of Jeff and Regina LaGrasso's three kids. Kiss, Mom. No, thanks. He's a cute little rascal who's always right in the middle of everything. Yes! But the truth is that Kyle is anything but typical. And if you follow him when he goes to a golf course, you'll see what we mean. In a sport where people spend a lifetime searching for that perfect balance between mind and body, Kyle Agrasso is a prodigy. Do you know how far the longest shot you've ever hit? Is it 100 yards? Is it 150 yards? Or I know. 172 yards. 172 yards? Yes. You hit it? Good grief. How much do you weigh? I don't even know. Really? Even to the most trained eye, Kyle's swing inspires wonder. It's a beautiful little golf swing. Bob Huber, a golf instructor for 30 years, watched Kyle hitting balls on a driving range and was so taken by what he saw that he videotaped the boy to see how he stacked up against the best golfer in the world, Tiger Woods. Huber flipped footage of Tiger to make him left-handed, like Kyle, so he could better compare the two swings. In case you're wondering, Kyle is the one on the left. Does that look similar? Or what? <laughs> it looks, there you go. It's just like him. There's it looks his like he, position. he learned to hit by watching Kyle. There what you it go. Looks like. There you go. But unlike the millions of other aspiring golfers who would give anything to swing just like Tiger, Kyle was born with the gift. Have you ever had a lesson? No. Just picked it up all yourself. I learned it on TV. Yes, that's right. This savant actually learned the sport with television as his only teacher. It happened three years ago and half a world away. When Kyle's father, a Marine sergeant stationed in Japan, took his family on a trip to Korea for a softball tournament, Kyle, who was only 18 months old at the time, started idly playing with the remote back in the hotel room. He was flipping through the channels, and the golf channel was on. He just stopped. And then he just sat on the edge of the bed, and he started watching it. This is a golf tournament or something. I think it might have even been like an infomercial. I don't know. Just somebody swinging a <laughs> golf club. And then he used the remote first, swinging it, just like they were. And then he found sticks outside. He'd bring it in. And then we got him a plastic club. And then he just sat there for the next three days and just swung the club in front of the TV. But what was initially just amusing to the family became downright spooky when the Legrassos returned home and one of Jeff's friends who played golf spotted Kyle trying to imitate what he'd just seen on TV. He said, you know, he's got a perfect golf swing. It's all on plane. And I said, look, I, I said, buddy, I don't know what you're talking about. Had you all ever talked about golf? No. <laughs> I didn't even have golf clubs. <laughs> okay. Had, had he ever, to your knowledge, seen golf on television before? No. We, we don't know where it came from. But even among prodigies, Kyle is unique. Because as magical as his gifts are on the golf course, nice putt, Kyle. they are only half of his story. Probably for a couple months before he turned two, I just started noticing that he had a little glare in his eye. It almost looked like a little white dot, like a certain way the light would hit it. You would be like, what's that? So Jeff and Regina immediately took Kyle to a doctor to get him checked out. And they were relieved when he diagnosed the white dot as only a cataract. But just as a precaution, the doctor suggested that they see a specialist for a second opinion. And he looked in what seemed like forever. And I was thinking, you know, I've seen eye exams before, and usually they're not this long. Mm -hmm. So I was getting a little antsy. And then he looked at us and he said, I think it's something a little more serious than a cataract. Now, what did he tell you? He said, I think your son has cancer. I think it's a cancer. Mm -hmm. 
In both eyes. In both eyes. The white dot Regina had spotted was actually a cancerous tumor. Kyle was diagnosed with bilateral retinoblastoma, a rare form of eye cancer that annually affects fewer than 100 children in the United States. If left untreated, retinoblastoma is 100% fatal, usually within one year. Dr. Carol Shields is an ophthalmologist at the Wills Eye Institute in Philadelphia, where Kyle was sent for treatment. One of his eyes was filled front to back with retinoblastoma. We were a bit worried about that because the larger the tumor in the eye, the greater the risk for it to spread out the eye mm -hmm. into the brain and other tissues. And kill him. And kill him. She said three or four months to live if you don't remove Kyle's eye. Three, three or four, four months. That's all. That's mm -hmm. it. <sighs> that was a shock. And so in order to save Kyle's life, Dr. Shields removed Kyle's left eye. Shortly after the operation, Kyle regained consciousness with only half of his vision. His passion for golf, however, remained as deeply ingrained in him as ever before. About four hours after his surgery, I have a picture of him with this golf club in his hand. So I had the medicine they gave him on his shirt, and he's in his pajamas trying to hit a golf ball, and he, he couldn't even stand up. It appeared that the worst was over. Kyle's left eye was replaced with a prosthetic one, and he began undergoing radiation treatments in order to save the vision in his right eye. But suddenly, without any warning, one night Kyle became terribly ill. His mother rushed him to the emergency room. He was gasping for air. And I thought at that time, um, I'm never going to make it to the hospital. So I pulled into the first driveway that I came to and ended up just carrying him to the front door, rang the doorbell, and I said, can you please call 911? The ambulance got there, and they immediately started giving him oxygen and, you know, hooking him up to everything so they could see what his pulse was, and his pulse rate just kept dipping. And at one point, it dipped pretty low, and, and the lady that was in the back, um, you know, with us, she yelled to the driver, you need to hurry. And at that point... Um, all I could do was close my eyes and pray. Kyle had developed a blood infection from his chemotherapy. When he was checked into the hospital, his temperature was 105 degrees. Happily, though, in a few days' time, Kyle's condition had stabilized. His temperature returned to normal. He was now a very old boy of three who had twice cheated death. And when Kyle was released from the hospital, Jeff decided the time had come for his son to finally play on an actual golf course. But because he knew next to nothing about the sport, Jeff started calling around to local instructors. But of the dozens of golf pros in the area, only one would agree to take a look at such a young child. He said, yeah, i got a three-year-old boy. I'd like to have you look at it. And I said, sure, come on out. And that's when local instructor Bob Huber first saw it, a pint-sized replica of Tiger Woods. I just gave him golf balls there on the practice range, and he started hitting them, and, and it was like, wow. Did you know that he was missing an eye? His dad told me that, but when I watch him swing, I don't even notice there's any handicap at all. It doesn't appear at all in his golf stroke or in the way he plays golf. Ever since that meeting two years ago, golf has become a near obsession for the Lagrasso men. Kyle and Jeff are a regular twosome on several of the suburban Philadelphia courses, only it's with the child playing and the father caddying. Nine times out of ten, when somebody sees me and him pull up, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, gosh. I got this little kid, and I have to play golf with him. By the fourth hole, the gentleman called his wife and said, you will not believe I'm getting beat by a four-year-old here. Surprisingly, the toughest part of the game for Kyle hasn't been trying to overcome his limited depth perception. He's already shot a remarkable 41 for nine holes. But rather, it's learning to accept the fact that even prodigies occasionally miss shots. Of course, while having a prosthetic eye doesn't make golf any easier... How can I not go in? It does make being a little brother to his big sister, Kristen, a lot more fun. One time, I put my eye in a cereal box. You put your eye in a cereal box? Yes, and my Kristen 
put cereal in her bowl and she takes a big bite and she he was like, There's something in here and she screamed so loud that she even ate my eye. When he isn't on a golf course, Kyle can be found practicing his craft in the La Grasso's backyard, which has been transformed into his own personal links. But during the rare moments when Kyle isn't playing golf, he's back where all this started, in front of a TV, still transfixed by that magic he first chanced upon three years ago. Is it going to come back? But last week, the Lagrassos were once again reminded that winning and losing at a game is all so very relative. Because that's when they brought Kyle back to Dr. Shields' office for his six-month checkup to see if the cancer might have returned. Everything looks good? We do high fives or what? Yeah. We do hugs. Yeah, we do hugs. Yeah. Yeah. He's, well, what else would you expect, huh? And once he gets that clean bill of health, this remarkable little boy goes back to living his life the only way he knows how. You ready, bud? Full speed. Full speed. How about we go half speed so you don't fall out? Full speed. <laughs> Frank, I love the story. Um, <laughs> Kyle gets six-month checkups, and, yeah. and, and he's cancer-free. Is there a long-term prognosis? The long-term prognosis is very good. As a matter of fact, the fifth birthday, the last test he had, was sort of a benchmark. You, you can shrink the tumors. You can't altogether get rid of them.